Woo! I have got a super cool guy that you're gonna love. His name is Devin Webb. He's 27 years old, right, Devin? Yes, he yes. lives here in Arizona and he is a solar manager. He's been in the sales space for a decade. And Devin is so awesome because even though he's pretty young, He's so self-aware, he's a leader in his community, he loves personal development, growth, Thousand. he's ambitious, driven, he's successful, he just bought a house out here, and he's gonna talk to us today about the value of knowing yourself and knowing others. He's gonna talk about um, self-awareness, leadership, He's gonna talk about relationship building, his own story as a kid, the struggles he went through, and how it led him to doing the most important work and making the most, um, the best investment ever, which is the investment in yourself. So Devin, yes. welcome. Yes, <laughs> that's the best intro ever. I'm, I'm gonna bring you out to my office. <laughs> <laughs> when we do correlations, yeah, that's amazing. Hell Thank yeah, you. you got the best energy, so I'm excited for us to collab right now on Let's this podcast. I guess the best place to start would be for you to bring us back to childhood, right around kindergarten. Okay. What were you like in school? Oh, man. Um, when they say, like, a, you know, they make jokes like a squirrel, like, climbing a tree or, like, dog, you know, chasing after a squirrel, like, definitely all over the place, highest energy uh, you couldn't stop me from just like being all over the place. Like I was a lot, I was getting lost at every single like amusement park. I don't know if anyone <laughs> got lost, but like, I would always get lost, go back to the car. They're like, where is he? So I was just always on a tight leash. Uh, I would say everything I was ever thinking. Cause that's how we are when we're younger, you know? Yeah. So I was always like, why are your teeth yellow? Like if you brush them, they would be white. <laughs> and my parents would be like, what do you know? What do you don't do it? So it got to the point where they would see me look at a stranger and be like, "Don't do it! Don't do it!" <laughs> you were just kind of free spirited. Yeah. Just no filter, and then how to learn. You know what I'm saying? How to like act and how to learn how to use a filter, which we'll see how it goes. I still struggle using one of those, but yeah, how to learn how to just you know fit in or whatever you want to call it, and then yeah. So your high energy kind of being all over the place academically, did that affect the way you learned and what happened as thousand, you were growing up? Thousand percent. So my first earliest memory of there kind of being an issue or problem was my mom. She came back out to the car after those parent teacher conference deals, but they were like, Hey, have Devin sit outside. And I was like, well, okay. So I'm like looking through the window, you know, to see what's going on. And my mom gets back out in the car and she's bawling. And I'm like, fuck, did I like, I, I didn't mean to get an F, you know, I'm like, oh, and then she's like, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Because I was like, what's wrong? She's like, it's fine. And I remember the teacher being like trying to explain that I just never was able to like uh, finish these concepts or finish. I would kind of go all over the place, but answer the questions. And so they were like, he's probably got like some pretty severe ADD um, mm. that needs to be, you know, looked at. And so she was just bawling because she didn't want to tell that to me, but I kind of knew when in that moment, like I was like, okay, like, huh. And I just, it didn't, it didn't really sit with me until my earlier years or until I grew up and you know, then they wanted me to be on medication and then all this other stuff. But it wasn't until like I was in second grade that a teacher made a comment like, oh, you'll be my ADD student this year. And I was like, huh. I remember I told my mom about it. She was livid of course, but yeah. So that, that definitely put a wrench in my ability to like believe that I had, I was just capable of doing things like everybody else was. Mm, Cause you were already labeled as being different. Right. And AD, ADD comes with its own complexities and challenges. Absolutely. How did you see it be challenging for you? Was there a particular subject or area where you struggled a lot? Yeah, a thousand. So um, in those areas, you're already going to have some hard times, like, you know, staying on track or just, you know, being able to do just certain things, paying attention and focusing. But comprehension for me was really hard, like comp comprehending like story problems. Yeah. So that was an issue. But an even bigger issue was um, the education system we have. It's designed um, where if your birthday's in January, you're really old for your grade. So you've got pretty much 
years or like months of cognitive development ahead of your peers if you're born in the summer. Mm. Okay. So I was a summer kid with ADD. So I come in and I, my first earliest memory of like kindergarten was trying to read because everyone's reading and I'm yeah. breaking down bawling. And the teachers and this kid's trying to help me and this teacher's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I can't, I can't comprehend this. I'm, I can't read. So I created really early this resistance to reading and I'm like, oh, I don't like that. Mm. And then that carried with me forever where I'm like, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. And then they would always say, oh, you haven't found the right book. I'm like, no, I, I just don't. I can't read. All the way until my like late 20s that I start challenging that belief and looking at that and then mm. realizing that that was just like totally, yeah, just kind of an error in the education system. Plus, it didn't help me having ADD. Yeah. So the way that you grew up in school um, made it a little more difficult for you to believe in yourself because you already had these labels of having ADD and struggling with reading. So right. at that point, you're kind of like, ooh, I don't know how the rest of my life is going to go if I'm behind compared to the other kids in school. A thousand. So as you got older, and I'm talking much older, like high school, then at that point, right. what were your beliefs about yourself then, years into school? Like I, I never even took my ACT or SAT, because I just knew. Like I was like, no. I won't do well. Yeah, like I'm not going to score well. Um, why would I do that? And then were you planning to go to college? My mom wanted me to, cause being mixed and such, like I, I qualified for some FAFSA thing. Right? Yeah. And she was helping me, you know, Hey, fill that out, do that. But I just knew in my core, I was like, dude, I, I, what if you can just get paid to work hard? Cause I, I wrestled, um, I got all of my discipline from wrestling and I was just like, I would give anything for there to be an occupation that just paid you for how hard you worked. Like that would be so amazing. And then mm. I just kind of was like, dude, oh, I know I'm going to score low because this just isn't my thing. Like being quizzed and asking questions, like it's just not my thing. So I was just like, oh, you know. So you, you didn't really want to go to college then? No, I was like, no, nah, I know I won't go. And so then I started being a server. That led to one of my friends trying door to door for the first time. Door to door sales. Okay. Yes. And so um, I, do, I do a serving job. I'm like, wow, I can make money. And I have like, you know, first little bit of money coming in and people like me and they're like always like, wow, I really like this guy. I really like him. I really like him. They're coming back to see me and I'm like, I love people. I love people. Okay. And then fast forward a little bit and I'm at retail. I don't, have you ever worked retail? No. Don't do it. It's the worst <laughs> thing you could ever do in your life because you're working the same hours, sometimes harder and all the pay is the same. So you could do far more than your peers, but your pay is the same and it messes you up. So you went from being a server to then being in retail. Correct. So I'm like 17-ish at this point. And at the time, working two weeks in retail in the winter months was like 600 bucks. Like that was your check after mm -hmm. two weeks, 40 hours a week. Like I was like, oh, this is tough. And then my friend went door to door. And in three days, he makes 1,500 bucks. And I'm telling you, this kid, I've competed with him my whole life, like one of my good friends. There just wasn't one thing that he could do that I couldn't do. And he went out and he's like, yeah, I made 1500 bucks this week. And I was like, no way, no way you did that. And so I was dumbfounded and I was like, what does that look like? And then before you know it, I'm getting in this car to Salt Lake and I'm sitting there with these like life changing leaders. I didn't know would be impacting my life till this day. And that kind of led to them um, just like me getting in the whole door to door space. So that's when, right, right when I was about 18. Wow. Okay. So you went straight from high school, right into door to door sales, which yeah. is typically a hundred percent commission, all commission, but because you had a friend who was already doing it and was showing you his pay stubs, you're right. like, I got to quit retail and take this big risk because there's way more potential for me in this thousand than there was over there at retail. Yes. Okay. So now you're in sales. And in sales, I know, because I did door-to-door -door sales, yeah. you learn a lot about people and you learn about mindset and like psychology of the human yes. brain because you have to learn how to sell things to people. So you got to know them pretty well. You have to learn how to establish trust with them, make a connection that's going to have them want to buy from you. Yes. So was that your first time in your life really starting to learn about personal development, self-growth? Absolutely. Um, and I want to say I did not sell 
one product. It was alarms at the time. That's what I was selling door to door. I didn't sell one alarm for two weeks straight. I know no one to this day who could have gone out every day for all those hours and not made a sell and keep pushing forward. But one thing that always was sticking with me was I remember that whole ADD thing and these just self-learning beliefs just coming up when I was in between doors and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to let this define me. I've got to push past it. So that actually created during that time in that two weeks created this work ethic, this desire and this hunger for success that unless I bageled for two weeks, I never would have done well in this industry. So two weeks, nothing. My parent or my manager, car group drivers are trying to pick me up because I'm bawling feel so defeated. And, and you were walking from door to door. Door to door. It's like 9 p.m. They're like, get in the car. I'm like, nah, I'm not getting in. Like, I've, I've got to figure this out. So through that, uh, the next day I get my first sell, and then I'm like, dude, this is not that hard because I, I just found a lay down is what you call them in this industry. Someone's very like anyone Easy could to have, sell yeah. to. I get my first lay down, and I'm like, so it's possible. Okay. And I'm like, that wasn't that hard. And then that led to me the next day getting another one. And I was like, oh, my God, like, I think I could do this. And so I fell in love with the first learning, like, well, what do you say? And then how do you say it? Like, and then I got to the point where I uh, I think I was 18. Fast forward a few weeks. And before Thursday, I had like eight alarm cells. They all paid about like 500 bucks at the time. And I was just eating at Chick-fil-A. I just had made like 4K in a few days. And I was like, that wasn't that hard. Because now I took all those skills I learned and I kept that same work ethic that I was able to keep. And that just like implemented into me just like killing the game um, from early on. And then that's where I was like, wow, okay. like." So it go. took like one initial success in the door-to-door -door space to have you see if I did it once I can do it again. And yes. then that's exactly what started happening. And as you were having this success in the door-to-door -door space, right. you were experientially challenging these limiting beliefs that came from having ADD and um, just learning challenges from right. a young age and breaking through that with these customers who you were selling alarms to. Yes, yes. It was, yeah, it was like, that was definitely the hardest part of it is just believing you can do it, you know, because you're like, man, well, that's easy for you because it's you. And it, we do that a lot. Like, oh, they, you know, the halo effect is what I call it. Like, you just kind of put people on these pedestals. Yeah. So it took me a while. I still struggle with that. But it took me a while to just realize, like, um, that was definitely what made it the hardest. It's just those beliefs. Being able to see myself differently and, like, push myself hard enough to just keep going until I figured it out. But... I didn't know it, but I was probably like at that time, like I was fighting more for my future than I ever had. And I'm just so proud of myself looking back, knowing that most people just wouldn't have probably ate dirt for that long and then still pushed through. Yeah, because think about it, it's 100% commission. <laughs> yeah. I remember the struggle of being yeah. like, this is insane. <laughs> my whole life is riding on this right now. Yeah. <laughs> right? So yeah. I actually get it when, yeah. you, when you talk about it. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, that like that's what created it. And then I would always hit these ceilings where I noticed my beliefs kept stopping me from taking action. The beliefs get so then that's where I first went into choice was because I was like, which is a personal development company in Vegas. And that's exactly where I met Devin a couple years ago. So that when you were in the sales space, you saw the growth and the self-awareness work that comes with it and you're like i want more yes so you invested in yourself for the first time by going to this training in las vegas yes and tell us what happened next i never was the same like my life's forever changed for the better um i remember i i was like 2000 or something whatever the investment was my parents were begging me to give it to them so that they're like i'll tell you you're special all the time and i'm like <laughs> It's not what they do. And I'm looking on the reviews. I have buyer's remorse. I'm like, oh, this is, what if it doesn't go that well, right? Yeah, then, what if this investment in myself going to this personal development training is not worth it? Which, that's a fear that anyone's going to have investing in anything. Thousand, is this going to be worth it? A thousand. Obviously, it was well worth it. Well. That was your first, um, like, 
huge moving transformational experience yes. in the personal development space. And after you went to that course, you continued to do door to door sales. Right. And what happened then? Because now a couple of years have gone by. Yeah. Now, now this is where it gets crazy. So I, I get held to my face for the first time this mirror in this feedback, right? Of how I'm showing up as a leader. And I didn't realize how shut off to feedback I was because I'm very sensitive. So feedback is basically someone else sharing their experience of you and the way they're perceiving you in life. Yes. So you were getting feedback from people on your alarm selling team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what was the feedback of you? I mean, they were just like, you need to take your time seriously. Like you don't value your time yet. And I'm like, I don't value my time. Like I didn't, I didn't know what they were talking about. And they're like, you are here, but you're operating here. That's, that was the worst one. I so you're not really using yeah. your resources in the best way possible, including Correct. time. Correct. And they know they saw something bigger for you. Okay. Absolutely. They would have me do correlation meetings in front of these grown men, all making far more and way, way further ahead in life than I was. And I'm like, why are you having me talk okay. in front of these guys? But they just saw in me early. They were like, he's going to be something. He, so them believing in me was monumental for me. Like even hearing my name in meetings from the leaders, I was like, just worked my ass off to get that recognition because they, they were life-changing leaders. So... That put me in a choice and where choice changed the game was just having the awareness of how I'm showing up and more importantly, like asking for feedback from my guys because I got the best, the best kind of nugget from someone who was like, hey, like just know when it comes to managing people and retaining them, keeping them here in your world, something might not be a big deal. Okay. But like in their world, it could be a huge deal. And so all you have to do to manage and retain is go in their world and figure out what it is that's falling apart and, mm. and figure that out with them so that there's a reason that, um, you know, in their world, if something's going on, you're not dismissing like, dude, it's not a big deal. Dude, just take care of it, bro. It's not my problem. Like sometimes managers will do that. And with feedback where that came in is I wouldn't ask for it. I would never ask for feedback because I was very sensitive to it. So now I started inviting my reps, the people who follow my lead, like, give me some feedback. Where am I? You know, what, give me some harsh harsh feedback because I think unfortunately people care too much about what people think so they would give light feedback you know what I mean mm -hmm. but Go it was easy on you exactly but I'm like give me the harsh feedback and it was always like take more action or dude you have everything figured out but just like you know be leading from the front more and so as much as that stung and I hated that feedback it just really would launch me into like taking more action or like okay you know so I started changing the way I, I, I started getting feedback and then um, I came across this guy who had me first do this personality assessment. It was called the Myers-Briggs personality assessment. Everyone thinks it's like a horoscope or thinks it's like, uh, they say, oh, what color am I? I'm like, no, this is like all science. Like this is a very, very scientific based personality type. So I take it and I start realizing so much about myself that I was like, dude, if this is that accurate for me, it's gotta be that accurate for other people. And then I just ask myself, like, what kind of leader can I be if I know how everyone thinks? Or how, how much better can I lead mm. people knowing how to, like, communicate with them? And I was just like, far better, far better. So at an early age, I think I was 19, I'm downloading the audiobook of every personality type, like, in depth. And I'm reading everyone's pros and cons. And then I start interacting with people and I start seeing these patterns in their language or the way that they... When you were trying to sell to them, correct. you were seeing what their personality style was. Correct, correct. And then um, from there, that just allowed me to earn trust far more. Because people will say, people buy from people they like, mm -hmm. but they actually don't. Or else, you know, people who liked us wouldn't buy other products. Like people would just buy from people they trust just a hundred percent. And it's far easier to trust someone when you are understood by them and you know that they understand you. Yeah. Especially when it comes to the way people buy. So to kind of end the tangent that, so personality types and then the skills just continue to compound. I started to learn how people like to buy just by their facial structures. Um, so I'll, if they <laughs> had their hands in their pockets or if they had lives of flashy clothes that let me know, okay, they love reliable guaranteed rates. Like take this low and slow and tell them we'll be step by step versus some people you cut straight to the point just again based off their structure because they value their time more than anything so they're yeah. okay to make a mistake because <laughs> they value their time so i started walking and i like start looking through this lens of like now i'm so self-aware 
I am so self-aware of how I show up, so self-aware of all these things. These skills just continue to compound. Okay, now, pause for a yeah. second. So you were in the door-to-door -door space for a while. You were slinging some deals. You went to a personal development training to learn way more about yourself. You learned the value of feedback, started implementing that in your door-to-door -door yes. team space, and you started asking reps around you, representatives around you, and other leaders on your team how you were being perceived by them and how you could improve as a leader. Yes. They gave you all kinds of ideas for how you could be better. Then someone else introduced you to a personality styles test, and it led to you realizing that if you could learn all the personality types, it would really benefit you in sales because when you walk in a homeowner's house, you're going to pin them down, know who they are, and then better be able to communicate to them and serve them in a way where you're going to get the sale. Boom. So you're just... A, a, you're just a container of Effect. knowledge now about yourself, but also about other people. Yes. So keep on going now. So yeah, exactly. So then somewhere, someone helped me understand um, education makes people a living, but like self-education is going to drastically change your trajectory rate. So taking it back to like ADD, I was like, oh, I can never read. Well, now I'm starting to realize that all these leaders like read books. They read books a lot. And I'm like, I got to start figuring that out. So now on the way out to area, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading, but I'm applying what I'm reading. I'm not just reading it to read it, you know, book after book, sales development after self, just like just all of this skill started to compound and compound and compound. And then I was like, wow, now I just feel like kind of a walking arsenal of tools where I show up to somebody and I'm like, I don't have to do anything but be myself and completely allow you to see that. And then now let's just create a space where, again, you know, I'm going to help navigate the way you like to buy and I'm going to understand the way you think to help best break down this process for you to go through that lets you see for yourself, like, what's best for you. And that works just really well for people because they're, mm -hmm. like, always being forced to do something or always someone's trying to convince them against their will. Or they're out of integrity, they, their energy's not on point. Like, there's just things people can just feel. And so once I started to just educate, it got to the point where I was like, oh my gosh, like. I'm killing yeah, it. Yeah, like, I, I kind of like forgot to look back and be like, oh. So like, this was the first time I kind of, like, after buying this home, I started looking back and being like, okay. Like, now I can see where all of this is coming in. All of those hours, all of the knocking. I didn't, you can't see when you're in the weeds yeah. that there's a sunset coming. You know what I mean? But I was just like, now, now that I'm sitting here and I look back, I'm like, wow, that was all worth it. Every book I ever read was worth it. Yeah. So yeah. you did a lot of trainings. You read a lot of books as time went on. Yes. And you eventually became a manager to where now you're leading like 15 plus people. Yeah. And so you have to really show up yes. in, in a huge way because you are guiding these people to create success for themselves. And you were once that person who was looking to others. Correct. So what is it like now as a manager for solar with all these people under you that are looking to you? It's probably one of the best feelings in the world when one of the people whose life was so going in a off to like just a random direction, right? Not that it wasn't valuable, but it wasn't what they wanted. You give them the skills, you give them the value of your proximity. So what took me a decade to learn, I can give someone in a year. And when I give that to people that I love like to death in a year, and these, and these cats are 25 years old and they used to be like, I would give anything to see $10,000 in my bank account. Like I would do anything. And now today they're, they, they make 30 K a month and they're like skills and their character development and them being able to understand themselves. I get to like really help out with, cause I understand myself so well. I know their personality type so well, our connection, our relationship is so like glued together that one of the most fulfilling things in the world is probably being able to take someone's trajectory rate and change it mm. and just, and just sit back and be like, that feels so good. Like that feels so good to know that it's on them, they did it, they did the hard work, yes. but I just got to like 
maybe shed some things to change their philosophy. And I think, I think that's who said, yeah. Jim, Jim Rohn, don't change your job, change your philosophy. And so that rang so true with me. And I was like, well, then that's what I'm passionate about. Because if changing your philosophy is the best way to enhance your life, like, how do you do that? You know what I mean? Mm. How do you do that for other people? And so, yeah, that, that is by far. And I, I wouldn't be where I'm at without those guys. You, when you have someone who looks up to you and they need you to perform or they need you to show them how to do it, you do the job far, far better than if you're just doing it for money. But like, of course, everyone needs money and that's at the end of the day, like, that's why we do it, but. Yeah, I, I, I can relate to you for sure because when I was doing door-to-door -door sales, the best part for me was making a difference for people. And I'm not talking just in terms of selling people solar and making an impact in that way, but yeah. my favorite part was my regional manager would send all the brand new female solar sales reps out to knock doors with me so that I could teach them my ways. Yeah. And nothing made me happier than being able to spend that time with someone and make a difference for them and then have them, you know, text me the next day when they were knocking by themselves and say, I set one appointment. And yeah. it's just, let's talk about that for a second. Absolutely. Making an impact in someone else's life. Now you've been in this sales space for 10 plus years, making a difference for the people who work under you, but making a difference for the homeowners. And I've obviously started this brand where my whole goal is to make a difference for everybody through personal development. Right. Why is this such an important aspect of our life, especially in our 20s to yeah. be giving back to people. Why is it so important? Hmm, it's a good question. Um, I think, I think because we've maybe experienced people giving to us. And for me, like the first person that comes to mind is Jim Rohn because who when, is he? So are you familiar with Tony Robbins? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he helped train Tony Robbins. And he's a big public speaker, life coach, yes. trainer. Yes. And until this day, there's not one thing that I've done in my life that didn't come from what Jim Rohn had said that changed the way I view things. Mm. So for me... His wisdom gave you yes. the skills that you have now and utilize every day. Yes. And you are like, I want to be a Jim Rohn to someone else. A thousand, yes. Okay, that's a cool concept. I like your response. Yeah, how about you? What What's... I think, of course, I agree. I've had so many people give to me and share all their wisdom and knowledge that has had my life be what it is today, including my own parents. Right. Um, but also, I would say it gives us purpose. Right. You know, it, it allows us to look outside of our own life and what we want to look at what someone else might be in need of. Nice. And I think that brings us significance. It makes us feel like I bring something valuable to this world and it's not self-serving. Right. It's to help humanity. I think it literally just fills us up from the inside out. I love that. It just contributes to our overall well-being, our health, our happiness. I know there's research right. to this, but I guess why I ask this question is because we're young and a lot of younger people think I don't have anything that I can do or say right. that will make a difference. I'm not a solar manager. I don't have people under me that I'm leading. I'm not right. this person. I'm not that person. How am I going to make an impact in someone's life? And I think a lot of people simply don't prioritize it. You know, they're busy going to the bars, just having a good time, and they're missing the element of contribution. And I'm not saying it's bad the way people live their life, but what I'm saying is there's, there's tremendous learning opportunity um, in contribution. Yes. Giving to other people. And you're saying it very clearly right now. Yeah. How have the people under you on your solar sales team how has their presence in your life impacted you? It's so hard not to light up when you ask that because it's so fulfilling. But um, so I went uh, during Christmas to drop off gifts. And one of the, my favorite people, his name is Brandon. Um, gifts to underserved people or well, gifts so to who? Well, so gifts to these uh, people who work for me. Okay, okay. Just to go give them like a, hey, here's, yeah. thank you for your hard work. Here's something small. Token of appreciation. Token, yep. So I'm driving around. 
giving money to homeless people and whatnot. You get a 20, you get a 20. Anyway, this kid is everything. Um, he's the most organized, you name it. Like, I have become far better just because of him. That it became this very healthy relationship where there was just a lot of, like, I would never want him to perceive me as not showing up around the ball. And so I, we both had our best financial years. He's one year in. And to make six figures your first year isn't too common because you're usually learning, mm -hmm. but he was that good of a student. So first year and he makes six figures. I am over there to go drop him off this little token of appreciation and his mom comes out and she's like, I want to just say thank you so much for mentoring my son. Like you have drastically changed the way my son views himself. He's not going to say anything because he's shy, you know, but like he thinks the world of you. And he was like, I've just met the most amazing human and I just wanted to tell you thank you. Thank you so much. Like you are such an amazing person. And I was just like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because it made me realize like without that, it doesn't, it kind of gets hard to do such a hard thing without the recognition of knowing you're making like changes in people's lives. And then the same thing with all the other people that um, I lead. Trey uh, is his name, another person that I, I, I manage. His parents, same thing. Just like a lot of like, thank you so much. And so those moments are just awesome because you really start to just realize like how much of an impact you're making on people when their peers or their parents come up to you and they're like, he's forever different. Like his confidence mm. is completely different. And I'm just like, man, so you managing other people and contributing to their lives professionally, which impacts their personal lives, right. has had you realize your potential and your value and what you bring to the table. If you weren't able to serve these younger guys on your sales team, you wouldn't really be able to see the ripple effect that you can have. Yes. You wouldn't really see oh, I'm a great leader because X, Y, and Z. Right. They are like your evidence and your proof that there's all these traits and qualities and skills within you that can help change someone's entire trajectory and what they're capable of achieving. Yes. Got it. It's, yeah, it's super surreal. It's, cause it's, you know, it's very hard. It's monotonous. Uh, you just go years. You don't know who you touched. You don't know what impact you made. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, that those are definitely the moments you just kind of sit there and you relish it. Like I screenshot every like, you changed my life or what? I'm like screenshot. Yeah. Like I'm saving that because, yeah, <laughs> like I, I love that. You're a get. words of affirmation guy, <laughs> yeah, which I, I get it because yeah, I'm yeah. a words of affirmation girl. I do the same shit. <laughs> screenshot, nice words, keep yeah. it in the albums for when I'm feeling sad, you know. <laughs> or discouraged. Yeah, I use it. I use it on my yeah my morning routine. I'm like, okay, yeah. Yeah. So I I think that it's so important for the people listening to really understand the value of having people or a community in your life that you can impact. Yes. And it doesn't need to be something tangible that you do or give. It can simply be who you're being inside that can transform someone else's life yes and that's really what it's about it's it's about being your authentic self and um and that alone is a gift <laughs> a thousand percent yeah a lot of us feel like we can't add value because we might not have all, but like some of the most value I ever added when i was brand new i was training all the reps brand new new barely anything but i had you know what i mean just all the desire in the world to get them to up level so you don't have to yeah know all this and that to start doing this and that yeah and your your bigger dream apart from all the sales because i would say door-to-door -door sales is typically like a stepping stone for 100%. most people right um what bigger grander dream do you have for yourself what is all this sales experience leading to for you personally yeah. um all the sales experiences journey it just leads to impact for me so i love impacting kids more than most people so this uh, organization, Big Brothers, I have yet to big sign Big Brothers, up. Big Sisters, yeah. yeah. I've yet to sign up and, and do something about it. But anyway, um, things like that where you can like give time to and help change trajectory rates of kids. It's, it's like just, a mentorship where you get to spend one-on-one -on -one time with younger kids and be a big brother or big sister to so them, cool. take them to different activities, and you become like a role model for them. So you, you look at that and you're like, 
what you want to do something like that yeah, in your I, future a or thousand. tell us so uh, i love real estate and i think that um you know, i don't knock doors to knock doors anymore i used to just knock to knock now i just knock doors to buy doors so to use this ca capital to buy more you know uh, deals so through the next five or ten years i'll just use it to get as much cash flowing producing assets i can and then let's say you know so when i'm 37 in 10 more years all i want to do is just be able to position myself to help kids going through any kind of like, uh, maybe they don't, they're not aware of themselves. They don't know what strengths, what weaknesses they may or may not be lacking. So just shedding light on that for them. And then all the value and the things that I've learned uh, mentally through Jim Rohn, through all this self-education, just doing the same thing for them, giving them the value of psychitecture and uh, of let, what? Psychitecture. Like What's the, that? That's like the development of psychology, just okay. like a deep, deep rabbit hole of like, um, you know, just how how your neurochemistry works and like getting these guys at like the mm. mega cognitive level to change what they need to change so that they can just kind of become who they want to become. For some reason, if I can do that for kids when they're younger, it just sits really well with me. I think it's easier when they're a little younger because they're not so against everything and they're not so closed off. And if you can just do it right, like it feels like that's just the best time to do it for them. So yeah, kids when they're young are open to learning anything. They yes. just want to be like a sponge. Yes, like they're like almost show me, right? Yeah. So just once they know themselves and helping them with that, then giving them the tools. Because if they don't know they love psychology, they're not going to pick up a psychology book. They didn't know that mm -hmm. they loved it yet. And so like being able to assess that for them and help them in those ways. And you want them to understand psychology and the human mind so that they can understand themselves. Yes. Know their gifts, their strengths, whatever word you want to use and see if that can assist them in determining what direction they might want to take their lives as they get older and yes. that becomes more clear to them. Yes. So this is going to be something that you probably start as your own business, like a mentorship, coaching. 100%. Um, education business for kids yeah it started off as like you know just like a joke like because they called me webster um your last name is webb okay right and then i was like all right and i uh, first create my little llc and webster was taken so i'm like oh let's try webstar that was available so it started off as an LLC and now I want to use it for like a name branch or a name brand, sorry, yeah. to just branch off my own, like just personal development. And it's just around like cognitive biases. Most people don't even know what those are, mm -hmm. but it's like the main, here's the main 12 that you're going to not be aware of that are keeping you in this pattern loop that's not serving you. And then here's your personality assessment. Here's all those yeah. strengths that you may or might not know that you can I love specialize. That. Like all that stuff to just help people be like, oh, because mm -hmm. I just, I never, that's just my wiring for how I am. I love psychology. So yeah. I took psych in high school, psych and AP psych. And I thought I was going to study it in college, but I love psychology too. And uh, it makes sense that, that, that would interest you knowing yeah. what you've done in sales. You got to know the psychology of humans, Absolutely. right? Yes. So it seems like you're looking at your own path of being in door to door sales and learning about people learning about yourself so that you can be more effective as a leader and as a salesman and a human in your yes. relationships and you've learned from big public figures who have been in those fields right and you've overcome a lot of your own personal struggles with learning challenges right you've become this incredible manager of a sales team and now looking into the future of your life, you're like, I want to turn around and implement all of the things I've learned and bring it back to the kids because that's where my struggles and challenges started. Yes. You as a child were pretty defeated when you found out that you had ADD and yes. you struggled with reading and you didn't know what you would be capable of in life given you were different. Yes. And then as you got older, you saw obviously that those learning challenges did not impact your success. We're sitting here in your very first home that you first per that you just purchased. Right. And you're like, OK, it's time for kids that were once me to realize that whatever makes you different and whatever you're most challenged by is not going to stop you from creating success and fulfillment in your life. And I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to do that by teaching you psychology and mindset skills, leadership development, 
Uh, is that has, what it is yeah. that what it's gonna be about? A hundred percent. Okay. I'm, I'm, I love this. I, I, I'm loving it too. I'm laughing because uh, that's what was in my head those two weeks I was bageling was I'm gonna figure it out so they don't have to figure it out. When you were in a sales slump, slump no with no sales, belief, no results, yeah, nothing. You're like I gotta do it for these kids. I'm doing it so that I never have like no one will ever go through this who follows my lead. Like I will figure this out so that you don't have to figure this out. Mm. I remember like always using that as like. A driving motivator to just I like, love that. Keep That's what forward. they call turning your pain into purpose. Yeah. I'm gonna live through this struggle and my struggle is gonna become someone else's survival guide. Yeah, yeah. Cause you're I, love I, that. I was like, all right, we're in this, so let's do this. So that's what yeah, um, got me there. And then Yeah. Along the lines with the kid stuff, um, yeah, it just there's there's no better time to start self-educating you know what I mean so so let's get into that just a little bit yeah I think that at least where I grew up because I didn't grow up in Utah like you did door-to-door <laughs> -door -door sales and really any non-traditional route is not the norm in Connecticut um, there's no such thing as door-to-door -door sales and there's really <laughs> no such thing as someone not going to college even in Las Vegas where I went to high school it wow. was just known that when you were done with high school you were gonna go to college get your degree and go get a job in corporate America right you're from Utah and I guess I understand now after working with people from Utah that over there it's a little different right. and people really actually kind of praise others on starting their own thing taking the less traveled path right um like what are your thoughts on like how much pressure there is in society for people to just fit into this one path yeah go yeah. to college get your degree well i will tell you i was asked more than what my name was so instead of that's the most i guess common thing when you're growing up right what's your name what's your name I was asked more uh, what religion and as, if I'm Mormon than I was if I was asked my name. That's, <laughs> that should put Utah, St. George, Utah. And I'm starting to get yeah. asked that too. Yeah, like it was like, wow. So if you went out like to the gym and you're just getting workout in and an older gentleman sees you, they're not going to ask you your name. They're going to ask you if you're Mormon. You're going to say yes or no. And then they're going to ask you if you're going to school. So this one really got me. So I'm going to try to keep this real not on a tangent because this shit, whew gets me more people will try to force you to go to school not even knowing what it is that you want to go to school for because they were forced to go to school so for example uh, our our economy has you know X amount of debt and X amount of it comes from all these different places but a nice chunk of it is coming from kids who don't know what the hell they want to do getting forced to go take out all these loans and then instead of being passionate about it, they realize they are not. And then they, for whatever reason, don't end up actually finishing the payments that they were able to be lended. And once I started realizing that the education system is just employee based, which there's employees out there that are phenomenal. You can't have a marketplace without employees. Yes or no. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you got to have them. So I think that's still good. But it's like, where is the place for the people who are passionate about understanding people who want to exchange products and services mm -hmm. for a living and learn about those trades like that's not really there in that educational system right yeah there's no personality type 101 or like how to sell this service without sales resistance it's, it's not really there or let's explore other paths that aren't college because there's <laughs> right. value in that yeah. as well how to, there's nothing for the entrepreneurs so now, now everyone knows that but until then it was like Oh, you better go to school. You better take your ACT. So growing up in Utah, as Mormon as it was, it was so very based on like, oh, he didn't. Oh, wow. He got a 4.0 in his ACT. He's going to be extra successful or a 3.8 on their uh, what's it called? Yeah. The high testing scores. They're like, oh, wow, they're going to be successful. And I was always just like, dude, it's a test like this cannot make or break who somebody becomes. So. That, that just added more fuel to the fire. And then that just made me even more want to just like go see what I can do. Because I was like, I can't believe I have to let this education system tell me. A test. Yeah. Tell me what tell I'm capable me, of. Yeah, what I'm going to be able to. I, I, I remember growing up in Connecticut and I had to take Connecticut State Mastery Tests, or CMTs. And I always scored below average. And I remember as a kid how defeating it felt to know that yes. I was below average. And I think 
any kid who's gone through that struggle knows right. there is a belief that gets instilled in you that's kind of says like you may not be capable of doing what other people can do. Right. And even when I was door knocking, I had a really angry man from his garage yell at me from across the street, <laughs> why don't you go and get a college degree? And I yelled back at him and I said, I did. <laughs> like, yeah, yes! I actually did get a college degree and yes! I'm still doing door to door yes! sales. Yes. But it's oh just like, God. it's really funny how there's people who want to push their agenda right. of other people following the traditional certain path. And it's like, that's not what's going to work for everyone, nor does it determine anyone's success. You're a living example. Mm -hmm. I can tell you all the sales guys in, on my solar team that right. I worked with are another example. Yes. I think that people really need to change the way they think about education and what possibilities there are for them and understand that there is no one size fits all ever. And I think when we're young, it's actually way more valuable when you finish high school to actually get hands on experience and learn that way than it is to sit in courses like math courses that I'm never going to use for the rest of my life. I just believe now after having done solar <laughs> that that's actually the way we should be doing things after high school, go get an internship, go try multiple jobs, right. get your hands wet, see what you like and don't like, take crazy risks. Yes. Right? Like a, a go try door-to-door -door yeah. sales or anything else. <laughs> I love that. He said go get it. Cause yeah, they'll do that. Right. They're like, go get a real job. And it's like, go get a real income then. Like <laughs> now who's laughing? Like it's just cause it's, it's sure. It takes people a while. Like, when you first start off, you might not kill it. It's like, dude, you just started. Name me one thing you did all out that you spent all your time with that you didn't get better at. And I always pause there and they go, I can't think of anything. And I'm like, this won't be different. If you put that same time, it, it, can't, it can't be different. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I just, oof, I hate, hate how all the time people are like, go to school, go to school, go to school. I'm like, do you even know what the personality type, what are they going to be good at? What, you know, so yeah. anyway, yeah. I, I have to stop myself or else I'll... <laughs> I'll get no, you I get it. But if you asked me years ago, I wouldn't have really known because I was fed graduate high school, go get your degree and get a job in corporate America. Now that I've surrounded myself with people who are more entrepreneurial, I'm like, actually, I don't think we should <laughs> yeah. be preaching that anymore. Yeah. Walking around with hundreds of thousands of loans and debt, right? Yeah. To, to, for what? For what? So that you can go give all your time to a corporation and then get taxed and then barely make yeah. a month-to-month -month living? And I know for some people, depending on the path they're going down, you do have to go to school and get a degree. I'm not 100%. saying don't do that, yeah. right? But I just think that there should be time for people to explore what their interests even are before yeah. they make a college investment like that. Because there's a lot That's of people who do have loans. I just went to school in state, so I never had any loans. But I knew because I learned from my older siblings mm -hmm. <laughs> who struggled to this day to pay off their loans, you know. So I just feel like the message that we can give to younger audiences is in your 20s and even just after high school, I really think that now is the best time to be taking crazy risks that have no logic behind them. Beautiful. <laughs> um, getting completely outside of your comfort zone and pursuing opportunities that you're unsure of, that you may be interested in. Um, it's just about like living with an uncomfortable degree of uncertainty, going and moving to a new place just because your intuition says so, yes. you know, talking to a stranger on the street because you never know where a connection can lie. Like now is the time in our early twenties to just take a huge bet on ourselves and to do the scary things because as we get older, we're going to have way more responsibilities, way less freedom. Yes. And we're young. Like the whole world is ahead of us in our 20s. What right. are your thoughts on all that? Oh, I love it. Like a uh, thousand percent. How can you take risks when you have kids? The, like, not just a mortgage, but then you've got the Car things payments, that they have to do. Bills. You can't even, my brother can't even go out of state. He's got four kids. He, I think that's why I don't have kids is because he has four kids and he's always like, 
I got the kids this weekend, or he's like, I got to travel. I can't travel there because I don't. I'm not able to take him out of state, or I can't move here because there's laws. Again. I'm like, holy shit. So yeah, yeah. There's there's just never a better time to take a kind of risk and just. I I, I know what's gonna come up for people, which is the fear that comes up for all of us. And I think the one thing I would say that would possibly help someone, um, you know, not dwell in that fear or sorry not let that fear over what take them and they end up not taking action on something would just be to ask themselves a question and ask themselves like what would it feel like if they never did take the risk and then they were in their coffin one day or they just you know what i mean they got to this place in life and they look back and they never did it and then ask them like how would that feel Mm. to have never done that and then hopefully that because i think we're motivated by pain like psychology 101 for humans is avoid pain you feel pain you want to get rid of it so i think sometimes people need profound questions that create a lot of pain for them to move themselves into action or else they won't do it yeah so like just keep like ask themselves like yeah like what will that feel like to not be able to experience what might be possible what will that feel like and just keep asking yourself that and that should hopefully lead you to like leaning out of your comfort zone and maybe you know trying to possibly move forward in a better direction. Yeah, I think it's completely natural for anybody to be afraid of taking risks. That's a normal human behavior uh, to have fears. Um, And that's something that we've definitely lived through. I mean, it was scary for me to quit my safe corporate salary job to take a 100% commission solar job. But I just know from experience that when you take risks, Um, that's where all the growth lies Yes. and that's where the value is at. What's going to happen is once you take one scary risk and you see that you can live through it and come out like a better human or learn something valuable that'll benefit you for the rest of your life, you're going to start seeing, okay, I can do this again and again and again, just like you when you started off in sales. Okay, I can get one deal, I can get another deal. It's about being able to at least just take the very first step, you know? Yes, yes. It's okay to have the fear and take the step. I love what you're saying so much because it goes into the one nugget of, uh, do you know Jordan Peterson? I've heard of him, yeah, the speaker. and It's why I bought this home because he says exactly what you're saying, which is we have genes in us that literally are dormant until we put ourselves in a new situation. So they lie dormant, these genes in you. Unlocked Mm. potential that we don't know how to access unless we push ourselves into a new environment, a new something. So when I heard him say that, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So that makes so much sense because any time I ever push myself in a new situation, I became a new version. I rise, I unlock parts of myself I didn't know I had. I was able to believe myself far more. So I never wanted to buy a home because I hated responsibility. (laughs) Anyone who works for me will tell you, yes, Devin can get complacent. Like, he'll kill it, but then he kind of likes to vacation. Like, he likes to have time off. Anyone who knows, you know, works with me knows that. Yeah. So I was like, how can I force myself to not do that as much? And then that's what led to, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to up-level my financially responsibility game, up level my responsibility and force myself to unlock yes. whatever I have in me. So after this podcast, one or two things will happen. I'll go down in history or I'll go bankrupt. So we'll have to see which one will happen. <laughs> I love that. You have to put yourself into yeah. these experiences where you have the opportunity yeah. to cultivate certain skills that are within you, right. but it takes an opportunity or an experience to see that it's inside you. Yes. That makes perfect sense. I was like, I, you know how we scroll on Instagram forever, right? Yeah. Like sometimes we get nuggets though. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's so true. So I just sat there after you said that and I was like, I just, <laughs> it just sat there on replay. I'm like, oh, I have to put myself in a new situation right now. Yeah. Cause I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to miss out on what I could do. So what would you say to anybody in their twenties? about living life what what is now what is the most important thing for the younger generation to know yeah man it's a great question um because every combination is different everyone's in a different spot for Uh, you what would it be like if you could give yourself this wisdom i know you're 27 but when you were 20 what would be the most important thing to focus on if I had to tell myself one thing to focus on, one thing to get better at in being 20, I think it would be to be patient. 
Because you don't know how long the journey is until you're kind of in it. Mm-hmm. And it can get daunting. It could get so exhausting mentally to be like, oh my gosh, like that's a long ways I have to go. And you kind of want to quit a lot. Like anyone who's an entrepreneur knows you want to quit all the time. It's very hard. Mm-hmm. I think patience because you've got to know like if you can be patient and you can just like take things can be a little less high energy or just I you know how sometimes people go really hard and then they let off or they go really hard and they let off just staying patient and thinking big picture like just try to grow one percent each day and just if you just do that each day just one percent you got a book that you read you took action you did whatever what I would tell myself is to just focus on being patient and improve just one percent each day Mm -hmm. because over the year that's 365 percent Wow. If you look at your growth over 365% and that compounds year over year, year two, year three, year four, I mean, that's 1,200% in four years plus the compounding improvement of the value you get to add to the marketplace. Because obviously we're really just paid on the, you know what I mean, how we add value to the marketplace is, I believe, how we're compensated. So getting 1% better in those physical and mental areas is really all you have control over. So just doing that and then being consistent as best as you can. You're going to drop the ball. You're going to have days. You know what I mean? Just don't beat yourself up. Like acknowledge it. Forgive yourself. Get back on the 1%. Yeah. And then you're just going to look back one day and be like, I'm a lot farther than I thought I would be. And when you say grow 1% every day, how can somebody grow 1% every day? Beautiful question. Someone who's not in sales may not have. Yeah the opportunity to learn about humans like right, so right. what would anybody what you're gonna want to do is um like because there's a lot of great podcasts but to just to kind of break it down into a simple one and i'll give you the podcast he wrote down this book called savers routine it's tom billy um what you're gonna want to do is just know like there's physical mental spiritual and uh let's see wait physical mental spiritual what's the emotional yeah i guess emotional would be the other one but Maybe just even in three, let's just say physically, you get a little bit stronger that day, right? Mentally, you, co- you just take some new information in. Just don't go to bed without having have just learned one thing. Mm, just okay. whatever that looks like. And then financial, like, um, I guess you could say that too, because people, they don't really get intentional with their finances until they have to, right? So I guess you could, you could everyone's going to have something different, like, you're going to care about health more than I care about finances and vice versa. Everyone's going to have something different. So whatever works best for you, whether that be health, physical pillar or money, just take those pillars and just ask yourself, yeah, like what's one new piece of information I can learn towards that thing? What's one new workout, one new whatever I could do towards that thing to help myself grow just that 1%. So before you put your head down at night, you want to ask yourself, have I learned one new thing today Correct. about my physical, mental, emotional well-being, yes. my finances, each area of your life. You want to make sure that you've learned something. A thousand. And that's the 1% every day. And, and this formula, it comes from, again, Tom Billy Saber's routine, and it's a formula used by billionaires. Listen. I don't need to be a billionaire to be happy, but I think it's cool to like shoot for the stars. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, of course. So like it's like silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, and reading. Mm. You like can do all those things each day. Yeah. Those are things you could do tangible, like action steps, do it each day. And then you just stay consistent with it. So when you're in your 20s, you want to focus on growth, which is what you're saying. And thousand percent skills. In order to grow, you've got to be aware. You've yeah. got to be aware of where you are now because you're not growing and going anywhere without knowing where you stand today yeah yeah yeah. and days off i guess hurt you more than days on that's another thing i posted about like we we never realize how much days off take us two steps back before you know a whole week goes by and we're like shit and that adds up and it compounds so just like one percent did i go to the gym today did i read today did i work today if you just leave it at that and you just did that six days a week you're going to those hard days where no one feels like doing it. But if you just force yourself to go do it, I think we'll just become versions of ourselves that we're so confident in. I and love that. Yeah. And we're so proud of that. We're not pushing things off and stress about those 90 million things we knew we, we were supposed to be doing. Like, you know what I mean? Instead yeah. of living in that energy, you'll live in this like abundant energy of like, I can do it. I'm capable. I'm so proud of myself. And then that just compounds. 
Every next level of your life demands a different version of you. Oh, God, that, yeah. That's a quote I saw, and it's so true. So thank you for those little nuggets of wisdom and for thank being you. an inspirational leader, for yeah. bringing your positive, uplifting I, energy I into have, my life. I have to say, Shada, you're like one of my most favorite people I think I'll ever meet. Aww. I love your energy. Like anyone who gets opportunity to be on your podcast is extremely lucky. Um, I have, I have no, don't think I've ever met a girl who's invested in themselves as much as you. I know I sit out, you know, to you all the time, but just kudos to you. And I'm like super proud of oh. this moment and just like what you're doing. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to try to add some value. Hell yeah. Thanks a yeah. lot, Devin. I feel no the problem. same about you. That's why I wanted to interview you for this podcast. And it's a great way to break in your brand new house, Let's which is go. such an accomplishment. So yes. thanks for being here. And of I course. can't wait to share this with the world. Awesome. Thank you.